so that the end is always like the origin. And here was the origin, so the end had to be just like the origin. For this is a basic law set up in the beginning, that all things bring forth after their kind. So if he impresses me with himself, and I fuse with him, when I bring it forth, it has exactly what he is. And so I say to anyone, I could ask for nothing greater for you than that which is contained in this benediction. You'll find it in the 14th verse of the 13th chapter of 2nd Corinthians. The Lord, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And grace means the gift, unearned, unmerited. The gift of God himself. So that's the grace, because grace comes through Jesus Christ. And the love of God. He brings that in because he's telling exactly how it's going to happen. You're going to stand in the presence of love. And you're going to use his words from the 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians. For these are his words. When asked to name the greatest thing in the world, Paul answers, love. So he brings in, and the love of God. And John tells us, God is love. Then he brings in the office of the Holy Spirit, which is the impregnating one. But it's all one. These three are one. You're standing in the presence of one being. And then you're embraced. But all these things are present. The gift is there, which is the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Love is embracing you, so the love of God is present. And then the actual impregnation is present, which is the Holy Spirit. For the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, that which is to be born of you will be called holy, the Son of God. But when the Son comes out in this form, the Son then blossoms into the Father. And he is God the Father. So this is the story of that simple, wonderful benediction, which you can read in just a matter of seconds. And I would ask you to commit it to memory, and if you're ever invited to say grace, and people say grace, just say it. It takes you just a matter of ten seconds to say it. And then they'll all join with you and say, Amen. And you need not explain it to them, because they would be shocked just like anyone else is shocked when they hear Mrs. Patrick Campbell's reaction to the Duchess. So here, we take this same theme and put it now on this level. I was embraced, and then I brought forth the nature of the one who embraced me. Wouldn't it be wonderful if she or he or they were this, that, and the other? And bring them before your mind's eye. And would you normally, naturally embrace them because of their good fortune? Wouldn't you congratulate them? But I personally am given towards embracing people. So it's not difficult with me to embrace anyone. I embrace them because I feel like it. I just want to do it. So I embrace and then feel the thrill that they've told me their good fortune. And the first reaction is to embrace them because they just told you of something marvelous about them. Well, take the same technique. Bring them into your mind's eye. Put yourself first into a mood of empathy. Not sympathy, empathy. You're rejoicing with them. And then, as they tell you in your mind's eye, you listen to it, then embrace them. And feel the thrill that is yours because they have accomplished their objective in this world. And I can do that with male, female, equally. In fact, when I embrace men publicly, my father, I've always kissed him. I wouldn't care. I wouldn't have the door to kiss him. If I came to the store at any time of the day, and here I'm a man with my children, I would embrace my father and kiss him. It always, to me, was the most natural thing in the world. And he expected it. If I met him on Fifth Avenue, I always kissed my father. It wasn't strained. It wasn't something that... Well, now you have somebody strained about it. I always did it. So, in my own case, I can practice this easily because it's natural with me to empathize with someone. Wouldn't it be wonderful? And then, at that moment, I embrace them. 
the God to bring it forth. Just as I brought forth what my father felt when he embraced me. So he embraced me and I was carried beyond any concept in the world when it concerns ecstasy. You can't conceive of the ecstasy. And that's what he felt for me. He was actually within himself all that he had he gave me. It was his purpose then to give me himself and the method by which I would unfold that self that he gave me. And it was a definite method. First, he would awaken me within my grave, my own skull. And then I would come out and the symbols that he foretold in scripture would surround me. And then I would go one step further and discover my fatherhood, that I am the father. Not looking to a father, I am the father. I am he. And then comes one more and one more and all these unfold because they were all contained within him.